Part of the map. Okay. I'm here with uh, Tiger Style Games, and we're checking out uh, Spider, Right of the Shrouded Moon. Yep, and uh, we're going to show you, we, uh, we showed the game off last year, and we're going to show a bunch of new stuff today. Uh, Treehouse. Yeah. We're good at the Treehouse. Yep. So that's David, and I'm Randy, and uh, we actually, yeah, showed this game about a year ago, and we discussed a lot of uh, the important concepts, like, uh, for example, the fact that the game knows where you are in the real world using your GPS location and it matches the time of day and the weather that you'd be seeing outside your window in the real world with uh, with that in game. So here we're oh, seeing wow. uh, a rainy day in this treehouse. Uh, we actually used our in-game weather device to pretend like it was uh, raining in the real world just to, so we could see some pretty cool conditions. But normally you would only see this um, if it was actually raining where you live, right? Or once per moon phase, that's every roughly three and a half days, you're allowed to use the time machine or the weather device to artificially change the current conditions in your real world with uh, you know, a replacement so that you can explore some of the, the different concepts in the game. So anyway, since we showed this last year, and we showed off some of the cooler levels, we thought we should show you some new stuff. So we're taking a look now at this level later on in the game. Um, I'm sure people who are familiar uh, with the Tetra Arcade at 2009, Game of the Year, Spider, <laughs> The Secret of Bryce Manor, uh, which this game is a sequel to. This, a lot of this stuff will be familiar, but um, basically you play the spider and climb on walls and ceilings, and there's kind of like this action drawing uh, gameplay mechanic where you leave these threads behind, and if you complete a shape with your threads in the environment, it makes a web. And what you're doing is there's lots of different insects that have different behavior patterns, and you kind of take a look at where the insects are and how they behave, and you try to figure out where to build the best web. Because as you build webs, you're running out of a silk resource, but when you eat bugs, you get that silk resource back. So you, you have to be smart and efficient. And if you're really playing for completism, trying to get every single insect, or if you're playing for high scores, you have to get super duper good at it. Be really, really efficient about uh, you know where you put your webs and stuff. So we're seeing a little bit of a somewhat more advanced insects. There's dragonflies, which we had in Spider One, but there's also um, Inchworms here, you saw they like dangle from uh, threads from the ceiling. Inchworms mostly come out when it rains, so if you're playing the game and uh, it starts raining and you, you haven't caught any insects yet, you can uh, log on so you can find some. Um, there's lots of stuff like that actually. We even use uh, Moon Phase, so like there's a, an insect collection board, you can see how many of the 30 to 40 lots and lots of insects that you can find in the game. Um, and, uh, you know, like if it's a, a special moon phase that you figured out uh, that certain moths only come out during, you can, like, get into the game and try to go find those moths. Or if uh, you just haven't found the inchworms yet because you live in the Sahara Desert where it never rains and you don't want to use the weather device to make it rain, um, then you can log on on those rare occasions when you're in Seattle and it's raining and then <laughs> you can go find your inchworms. Um, so, yeah, we're really trying to make the game sort of blur the lines uh, between the game world uh, and the real world that make you kind of feel like it's creepily looking over your shoulder and it knows if it's day or night and stuff like that. Um, and we did a lot of other stuff too to make it relevant, not just insects. Do you want to go to the window interior now? Okay, sure. So one of the one of the rules of the game is that when it's raining, the wind is blowing harder. Um, and so we use that for this windmill level. So it's kind of like an old janky windmill that doesn't work very well anymore. Are we doing windmill exterior or interior? Um, we could do either, really. I'm gonna show you can the do exterior. one and then the other. The exterior is kind of an interesting thing to yeah, show. Yeah. Just, uh, and then, you know, they're paired. So. Yeah, yeah, so it's under barn. Um, so basically, what we tried to do is, like, you know, we, we uh, racked our brains really hard to think of all the ways that your conditions could change your gameplay and even the story and your exploration and basically anything. And so in this case, uh, this is a windmill that's, that appears in the, the estate, the Blackbird estate that the game is set in. And if it's raining, um, then the windmill sails keep turning all the way around because the wind's blowing hard enough. But if it's a clear day, they kind of roll one direction and then roll back in the other direction. And so we tried to use that distinction to like make the gameplay as different as possible. So in this version of the level, you know, you're on this carousel and spinning around the whole time. Um, but when it's clear, you would like stop and then go back the other way. So you kind of have to like move, make your way around the sails and get all the way to the other side to find all the other insects and figure out how to spin webs between the sail blades. Right, right. Um, and the insect populations change and, uh, you know, maybe surfaces become slippery. And, you know, we're trying to tie the, the game condition stuff, all the weather and time based, uh, you know, segments of the game and, like, have them affect uh, the game world as much as possible in a variety of ways. 
there's entire like sections of the game you can't get to in certain conditions. You know, rain spouts you can't go up if rain's coming down them, so you have to wait till it's clear. Um, Victoria Muse, I guess that's a yeah, part of San Francisco. Though, yeah, right? that was where, that, like in the mission, I guess that might be some sub neighborhood. Yeah. Can I do this? I think hmm. I can. So I'm gonna you change can, the uh, weather. Yeah. Use the weather device. So this is how it would normally appear. Oh no, it's because we were in debug mode. Um, reset. Now we'll do it. Nope. It's because I it's because oh, I have the override. override. Yeah. yeah. So Excuse what do we want? Use our debug uh, <laughs> shenanigans right now. Uh, let's go to clear deck. Clear day. So right now in San Francisco or Victoria, whatever that said, Victoria Muse. Uh, it's a clear day, and um, so this is how the game would normally appear. So oops, that's not the right one. I'm gonna go inside the barn or inside the windmill. And uh, so in this case, like this is inside the windmill where the gears are spinning in one direction and in the other direction, and that greatly impacts. Uh, the kind of like um, <laughs> gameplay because instead of just like constantly spinning around and tackling hornets, you can build these webs, but you have to build them pretty quickly um, because eventually the windmill is going to move again. And when it does, your webs will break. So deformable, breakable webs are like a new thing in this spider game. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so that comes up in a, quite a few levels. There's a laboratory with a lot of moving equipment because there's sort of this mad scientist character who's one of the important characters of the game. Um, and it's been really fun, actually. It's a little bit like, uh, it's almost like uh, taking damage in a combat game or something where like even though you can make forward progress is the way that the game is kind of pushing you back unless you're good enough, fast enough, smart enough about where to build your webs. Um, so just like the first game, uh, the game has a story that's told uh, totally through the environment. There's no cutscenes, cut no dialogue, basically no words at all. And um, the way you know about the story is by looking at the props, the environments. Um, basically, it's a story of a, a state that was built by a secret society and the family that lives there now. And some of the people in the, the family know about the secret society, other ones don't. Some of them know what the secret society was up to and what's the secret you know, purpose for which they built the estate, and other of them have no idea at all. Um, and they're all gone now. Something terrible happened to them and they're not here anymore, and you're sort of trying to figure out their tragic fate. Uh, by looking at just, just the, the, you know, the personal items they left behind in the environment. And that's a hard one. Yeah. It's better to I'm wait. under, I'm having performance anxiety too. Oh, you almost got it. <laughs> dunk, 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 dunk. <laughs> yeah, so it's been really fun. Uh, like this is, oh, this, uh, the place where David's trying to go is nearly impossible when it's raining because the gears are continuously spinning. Oh. So it's like an example of something that's like, it's much easier to get to on a clear day yeah. than any other condition. That was the monarch butterfly. It's an uncommon butterfly. There's also common ones and rare ones. Um, obviously, they're worth more the rarer they are. Um, and there's lots and lots of much more deeply buried secrets than even in Spider One. Spider One, basically, for people who were really into it, had a story that you could optionally follow. Some people didn't. Uh, that was totally fine. You can just play for advanced, high-scoring stuff if that's what you're into instead. Um, but if you're really paying attention to the story, there was kind of a puzzle that was pretty sneaky. We didn't tell you about it uh, very explicitly. You had to kind of figure it out, its very existent out for yourself. But if you did, there was something you could do in the game world to prove that you understood the story, right? And that was like, that was the secret of Bryce Manor. Ah. Um, that was awesome. I think people liked that. But unfortunately, only like, ooh, this is a risky one, David. I don't know if you're going to pull this off. You're attached is to that rotate? chain. Yeah, oh, you it's a chain. I didn't you got, even realize. You have a few more seconds. Oh, you had a few more seconds. Uh, just build over here. So the, the, the cool thing about the secret of Bryce Manor is that there was a secret. That The less cool thing is that it was so deeply buried that not a lot of people found it. So one of the things we're, we did in, in uh, this new spider right at the Shrouded Moon is that there's a bunch of different mysteries. There's one for each of those locations on the world map that we showed you. And um, they're a little bit each easier to notice and hopefully easier to solve for most players. Um, but if you're still one of those players who really likes really sophisticated, clever puzzles, they all, each of the puzzles that is easier to solve kind of ends with a question mark. Like it answers a bunch of questions, but it leaves one big question and answer. Bam! Got crushed. Oh. Squish. And so those unanswered questions kind of add up to yet another mystery that we don't come right out and talk about. That you have to be uh, looking for it yourself, basically. And there's even more deeper than that. It has to do with moon phases uh, and when, when you can find certain things in the game. And I'm not even going to talk about that. It might be apparent at this point that the game is several times larger than the original Spider. I mean, in raw content, just levels that you can no, visit. No, don't go down. You don't. You don't want to spoil that. There's I don't, a secret I don't even down. know what's important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're trying to. You're, you're trying to play it. some of this close to the vest. I mean, you know, fundamental. Like, if you're watching this video, I mean, are you taking notes? Like, maybe you should be. Uh, that might be useful later <laughs> <Please> on. <don't. laughs> um, 
so uh, the game is just you know in raw form playing front to back probably four or five times larger like there's there's 30 levels but they're significantly larger in scope they usually have multiple game plans we have top-down environments um, and then on top of that we've layered this whole uh, time and weather thing so every level in the game can be played in four different conditions different populations the whole nine so just just in uh, scope and size, like we've uh, kind of outdone ourselves, and this is why the game is taking longer than we had originally intended it to. But like, uh, you know, we think we're we're delivering an experience that's you know more complete in a way. The first Spider is so, almost like a prototype by comparison. Um, there's just so much more of everything, and uh, hopefully, you know, it's not just more for the sake of being more. It's uh, actually content that people wanna wanna check out and consume. If you're a spider fan, there's just like lots and lots of spider to love, and if you are not a spider fan, you're gonna be, is basically the plan. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I was gonna ask, uh, I know this game's still in, still in the works, uh, you hoping to have it out this year, or? Oh yeah. It's very close. We're very close. Yeah. The, all the levels are built, um, the content is all done, like our, our team just got a lot smaller finally after building this giant thing for the last uh, couple years, and we are about two months from submitting, maybe at the most. Um, so we should be on sale in May, I think. Oh, very cool. Look, looking forward to, look forward to checking this game out. Thank you. Cool, thanks. Oh, yeah, th uh, yeah thanks, for, thanks for doing this.